Hi all, my name is Dr. Carmen Brown and I am a board certified obstetrician and gynecologist. I'm currently living and working in Melbourne, Australia, and I am the founder and managing partner of ExpetMD. We are a full service consulting firm dedicated to helping you, the American physician, work in either Australia or New Zealand. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the different types of pathways for registration to work in Australia. So a lot of doctors probably have heard a lot about working in New Zealand and I truly feel that the reason why New Zealand has been more of the more popular choice is because quite honestly it's based on the fact that a lot of people talk about it quite honestly. A lot of doctors have gone to New Zealand to do short-term locums and because of that via word of mouth everyone knows a friend of a friend of a friend type of thing that's done a year or so in New Zealand and that's kind of how New Zealand has probably gained a lot of interest in those American circles. However, another option for American doctors is to work in Australia. Now, New Zealand and Australia are not the same country, two totally different countries, and that's a common misconception. However, they both do have significant similarities and in most cases will share some of the same colleges. So for example, if you're an internal medicine physician, you would be basically under the Royal Australasian College of Physicians. And so that would cover both New Zealand and Australia. I'm an obstetrician, and so I am under the Royal Australia New Zealand College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Now, as far as working in Australia versus New Zealand, obviously that's a personal choice. So everybody has their reasons as to why they would work in one versus the other. I do have to tell you that it's a little bit harder to get working in Australia just because there's a little bit more working parts. And that comes down to the fact that Australia is a much larger country. There are six states and two territories. Up until recently, within the last several years, in order to get registered, you would have to actually register in whatever state that you wanted to work in. But however, now it's more streamlined and there's one big federal registration body. So that makes things a lot easier, a lot more streamlined. However, there there are a bit more hoops to jump through if you do want to come and work in Australia. And today I'd like to talk to you about the different pathways that are going to be specific for you, especially if you're coming from the United States or Canada. So one of the things that I have found is that it is very murky trying to figure out exactly where to get started. And I believe as physicians, we're all type A, right? You just want to know, tell me A, B, C, and D. Like, what do I need to do? And unfortunately, the pathways aren't very like A, B, C, and D. There's a lot of little working parts that you have to get going. And some of them, some of these balls are up in the air at the exact same time. Things sometimes do change. And of course, thanks to COVID, Things have changed a lot. However, there is a lot of just still basic kind of things of where you start if you are interested in getting a job in Australia. Now, one of the most common questions I get is, can I work in Australia? And the answer to that question is yes. However, it really does depend on exactly where you are in your medical career. Now, I say that because in this video, I'm specifically talking to you, doctors who have done their training in either the United States or Canada. Now, if you are a physician that has done their training or has done medical school in another country, you can feel free to contact me for a free consultation. I can tell you a little bit about some nuances associated with that. But in general, talking to you today about physicians who have done medical school and residency training in the United States. Now, one of the things I did to kind of help kind of tease out and make this a little bit easier is if you're a visual learner like myself, I wrote a book that kind of outlines exactly what we're going to talk about today in detail. And of course, all of this is located online. So of course, just use your online if you'd like, but I did write a book. So if you just feel like reading, here's the book. So ExpetMD, and you can buy this either on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or at bookbaby.com. Inside this book, I basically put literally everything that you need to kind of get licensed in Australia and New Zealand. But today I'm focusing on Australia. Now, to get started with this process, the very, very, very first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to need to open an account with the ECFMG. 
Now, some of us have never heard that word before, but for a lot of our foreign physicians, they know of that very well. So this is the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates, so the ECFMG. Now, the ECFMG is basically the body that is responsible for checking the credentials of doctors from foreign countries. So as you can imagine, you being an American doctor coming to Australia or New Zealand, you are now a foreign doctor. That means you. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to open an account with the ECFMG. And the actual account that you will do is you'll actually create an online portfolio so that you can upload your credentials so they can be verified. What they're doing is checking to make sure that you did indeed graduate from medical school, you did indeed graduate from residency, and that you are board certified. So those are the types of things that you will be uploading for them to verify. And these things are actually verified directly through your residency program or your medical school. There's nothing really that you'll need to do. So you'll actually open your online account and this is something called EPIC. So this is your electronic portfolio of your international credentials. And so this is where you upload copies of your diplomas, your board certification, and of course some verification that you are who you say you are. Once you've done that, or basically at the same time, you'll also need to start an account with the Australian Medical Council, the AMC. Now the AMC is going to be the body responsible for reviewing Viewing those credentials and to making sure that you are once again the physician that you say you are. So you'll need to tell the ECFMG that you want your credentials sent and verified to the AMC. So this is why these are those kind of two balls up in the air at the same time. So you want to make sure that you establish your account with the AMC and of course you want to make sure that you open your account with EPIC or the ECFMG. So once again, kind of going at the same time. Now, that's the first step for everyone, no matter which pathway you go down after this. Now, the pathways I'm about to go over with you depend on exactly where you are in your like medical training or life. So most of you that have reached out to me and most of my clients are board certified doctors who are trained in the United States. So the vast majority of you all will be going down a certain pathway and we'll get to that. But I'll touch on the other two just so you'll kind of have an idea. Now, one of the pathways that doesn't really have a lot to do with most American physicians that might be listening to this is something called the standard pathway. Now, the standard pathway is really for any doctor that has not really done any of the examinations that we normally take in the United States, and that's specifically the USMLEs. So I won't spend a lot of time on that, but there is a pathway for doctors who have not taken the USMLE exams and that do want to come to Australia. Now, in order to do that, they will need to take a test, a multiple choice question test, or what they call the AMC MCQ, Australian Medical Council Multiple Choice Questions. Now, this is examination, I believe it's 150 multiple choice questions, and you will need to take that examination before you can actually get licensed to work in Australia. Now, once again, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I will put links down below on um, the AMC site that goes a little bit over that standard pathway. So this would be the pathway specifically for a doctor who has not taken a USMLE examinations. You will need to take examinations once you get here if you've not taken and passed all three steps. Now, the other pathway to talk to you about may be some of you all out there. And so this is the competent authority pathway. Now, for you all watching this video, that might be for you because what if you're an American doctor but you have not received your board certification yet? In that case, a lot of doctors, as you know, in the United States, board certification is not a requirement for you to work as an attending physician, especially in a lot of states. And so if you don't have your board certification, you won't really be able to qualify directly for your specialist pathway, which we'll get to next. However, you could go through what we call the competent authority pathway. Now, the competent authority pathway recognizes that you are a physician, that you have finished and taken your um, USMLE step one, two, and three and passed, but you don't have specialist certification per se or board certification. However, you are still a physician and licensed. So in this particular pathway, you do not have to take any additional examinations. And as long as you're coming from certain medical schools that are verified, and that's pretty much most osteopathic or allopathic medical schools in the United States, 
and you have done a minimum of two years of residency training, then that's you. You can actually qualify for the competent authority pathway. Now there's a couple other bits to that and I will put links down below on that, but that would be probably more for my doctors that have reached out to me who are maybe still in residency and not really sure exactly where they want to go or maybe they just want to take a couple of years to go somewhere else or my physicians who are not categorical and have done a couple of years and have a couple of years under their belt but have not successfully matched into a residency program. So this could actually be for you. Lastly, and the one that is mo mostly for most of my audience there. So these are once again, US or Canadian doctors who have board certification. You would be going through the specialist pathway. Now the specialist pathway, and this is where it gets very, very hairy. In order to register for this specialist pathway, you would have to start off with, of course, like we talked about before, getting your EPIC, your AMC, and getting your credentials verified like we talked about before. So that all stays the same. But this is where it gets different. The next step you'll do is have to contact your individual college so that you can kind of gain an application, get an application to get into their pathway as far as recognizing you as a specialist in Australia or New Zealand. Now, a lot of people hear this and they get really confused. Now, I am not saying that you're going to be doing residency again, no. I am not saying that you are going to be taking your board examinations again. That's not the case at all. What I am saying is you'll do an application and you will need to do a year under supervision usually in Australia or New Zealand. And this is for mostly everybody. So a lot of people hear that and they get really stressed out and that's when they shut down. So I'm here to tell you, Having that year is not a bad thing at all. And this is really a more collegial relationship with an Australasian trained doctor to kind of show you the ropes. But also remember, you're a foreign doctor coming into a brand new system. This is a universal health system. It's a completely different situation. Most of our guidelines are, of course, Australasian guidelines and sometimes based mostly off the UK guidelines. So it's very different as far as some of the ways that we practice here. Of course, there's going to be similarities, but there will be some differences. And so this will be your opportunity to get your feet in, to really feel what it's like to practice here, but also have that relationship with someone to say, hey, is this really how you do things? Can you kind of tell me exactly what I I would do in this situation. So it's really a good opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about the Australasian way of practicing. Now, lastly, most of you out there have heard this. You've heard specialist pathway and all these other words that I've thrown at you. And it can be really, really daunting. But I promise you, it is a way to work through all of this. Once again, if you're a visual learner like myself, you can always pick up a copy of my book. Or if you'd like a little bit more hand-holding, we can do that too. And at ExpatMD, that's exactly what we do is to help you, the physician, figure out exactly the best way forward. We help you with interview preparation, and we help you with all the things that you'll need to get fully licensed and board certified in Australia and New Zealand. So when you're ready to make that jump, feel free to contact us at expetmd.com. And I look forward to seeing you on this side of the world.